this today. I see that now. Um, so if you need a ticket, um, please get one today. If not, get it, um, get your money turned in and get the tickets given to the appropriate people. Um, the Christmas Cantata is coming up on December the 17th. Um, please join us if you're willing to sing with us. We uh, um, don't have a large group this year, but we hope to make a joyful noise. The angel tree is also up in the back. Um, it says on here that the angels are on there, but they're not yet. The angel tree is up, so next week the angels will be on there. So if you can pull one of the angels and um, buy a gift, that would be great. Um, also, uh, as far as council news, uh, it's not in the bulletin, but we are coming up on the end of the, the end of the year, getting prepared for the annual meeting, uh, the first of January. Um, I'm asking that uh, each one of the committees please uh, start working on their reports to get turned in, so that we can uh, for the annual uh, booklet. And also, if your committee has not turned in your uh, budget request for the 2024 budget, please get those to um, Jimmy or Alan or Tim, and. Um, so we can, they can start working on the budget and getting that prepared also for the annual meeting. Um, is there any other announcements today? All right, let's. Well, good morning. Good morning. I don't know if we have a feed yet this morning or not, but hopefully we do. Hi, Dean. Hi, Michaela. I'd say hi to Robert. He always adores me. Um, hi to Arliss Joe. Thanks for coming by the house on Halloween. And show us your, uh, your costume for the year. One announcement I have is that the funeral service for Jeanette Altman will be this Tuesday at noon at Strickland's over on Highway 21. So um, if you can join us on for that event, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate it. All Saints Sunday is one of my favorite holidays of the church year. And there's a lot of reasons for it. One is it's a holiday that recognizes the everyday ordinary person. This is not about popes or bishops or even really pastors. It's about the people who are in our lives who touch us with the love of Jesus and who influence us and move us to become followers of the Lord. That's what this day is about. And I have a whole list of names that I remember of, of every ordin ordinary people, everyday ordinary people who touched me, who, who made my life different. And there's a whole list of them. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but I am going to talk about one of them in the sermon today. But in, in, in kind of processing this and, and what it means to me, I came across this reading. And he starts off with this verse from Psalms, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So this is a day when sometimes there's tears because of remembering someone significant to us. But in this discussion, he goes to talk about when we're young, we got the tiger by the tail and we know everything there is to know, right? I missed the chance to learn stuff from my grandfather because I knew everything. What a dummy. But then he goes on and says, there's a reason for that. The heart is not yet broken, not in the way it is when time crashes down on it, like sour dreams or career missteps or divorce or illness, the death of loved ones, the passing of so much that we love. But old age, by old age, the ghostly procession of the once was can be unbearable. My heroes include any elderly persons who kept the flame lit. And that's what we're talking about today. Those people who kept the flame lit for us and for others. Life enlarges their spirit, becomes fuel for the remaining journey, seasoned with humor, not bitterness. They age with dignity. And so that too, to me also, is a part of what it means to, to celebrate on this day. Are we having a problem of some kind? <laughs> What's going on? You're fine. I'm fine. I've, I've just got some other stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, with that in mind, let's um let's begin our service with uh, the prelude.
stand as you're able. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song, For All Your Saints, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved God, in Christ you have drawn all your people into one holy communion. Grant that as we remember the saints who have gone before us, we are strengthened for lives of faithful service to you, so that the world will know your blessed presence. Bring us at last to the feast which has no end, for all will be one, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the proclamation of the word.
first reading is from Revelation chapter 7, 9 through 17, and it can be found on page 1,223 in your pew Bible. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever amen then one of the elders addressed me saying who are these clothed in white robes and from where have they come I said to him sir you know and he said to me these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore they are before before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more the, sh the sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes here ends the reading the second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It's in page 1,211 in your pew Bible. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Here ends the reading. Casey Jam.
was already giving the answer, and I hope you were listening. You know what today is? Well, the church is anniversary. Absolutely, you're right. That's a special day. But what else? We're celebrating our church. Um, All Saints Day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor. They weren't listening. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we are. We're talking about All Saints Day. Do you know what Saints, who Saints are? What they are? We're talking about a little bit too. They are people that came before us. Did you know that? Yeah. In the Bible, we've got you know Peter and Paul and Moses and Abraham, but you also have some saints in your family too. Did you know that? I'm going to share with you. Now, before I do that, you know, yesterday I had the opportunity. I've not met this thing in person, but I have to feel about it. And it was Miss Carolyn's daughter. And she is now a saint. And I learned how wonderful she really is. Can you blow Miss Carolyn a kiss?
gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying... What he's telling his friends is, if you want to know the kind of people I hang out with, I'm about to tell you. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you falsely, and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. May I be seated. seems like every time I turn on the TV and catch a TV preacher, they're always preaching from the book of Revelation. I don't know why that is. I'm just the opposite. I just as soon avoid the whole thing. I, I try very hard to avoid preaching from the book of Revelation, but I'm going to do it this morning. You see, I avoid this book because... Well, there's a lot of people who have different interpretations to it, and I found it's a pretty good way to get into an argument with somebody. I actually saw it happen one time in a line of the DMV, people trying to renew their licenses. They got in an argument over some small detail in the book of Revelation, and I thought they were going to start swinging at each other. So I try to avoid that. Secondly, Revelation is a book that's written in code. It was done that way on purpose. If this letter fell into the hands of the wrong people, namely the Roman authorities, they would look at it and read and go, <laughs> whoever wrote this is a whack job. He's crazy. But the people who got it knew what the code was, knew how to read it, knew how to understand it. Best for us, we can make an educated guess, but sometimes it's just an opinion, and you know what they say about opinions. Nor do I make any claim to have any kind of keen insights into the meaning of all the visions and images, and I seriously doubt that my insights would add much to the discussion anyway. But the book of Revelation strikes me as a book of hope, and I know that sounds strange because in this book there's a lot of death and destruction. But I call it a book of hope because what it says, what its message is, is that it doesn't matter how bad it gets, and it can get pretty ugly. And the book of Revelation describes an ugliness we can't even begin to imagine. But no matter what, God is still in charge. God has not abandoned us. And God will set it all right in the end. That there is no force in the universe that can ultimately hinder God's plan. I don't think it gets much more hopeful than that. The opening lesson for All Saints Sunday echoes this theme of hope. So the previous scene is the one that provides the infamous number 144,000. It even shows up in the back of the, of the song about when the saints go marching in. Everybody's hung up on that number. But if you read the text itself, it says that all of these people are from the tribe of Israel. Anybody here got Jewish blood in you? A few. I do too. Well, the 
rest of you don't count. That's not the number that concerns you. The number that concerns you is in the passage that we heard read. The scene has shifted a little bit. We're now in the throne room. And the multitude there can't be counted. It's huge. That includes all of us. It's huge, and it's multi-ethnic. Every single skin color under the sun is in there. Every language is there. Every style of dress is there. And we're all mixed up like a bag of M&Ms, gathered together, praising and worship. The place is rocking, and people are falling over, and the noise level is deafening, and it sounds like a revival. Or maybe, as Neil Diamond once put it, Brother Love's Traveling Salvation Show. And those martyred in the Great Tribulation, they're alive and well again, cared for by the Lamb who was also, ironically, their great shepherd. And they're overflowing with joy. Evil did not win. The Lamb triumphed. The scripture says salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. But the context of that is in song. They're singing that. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. I don't think we need to worry about which setting it's going to be. I think it'll be just a pretty wild, raucous time. Heaven is not a dull place. We're going to be reunited with the faithful who have gone before us, what the ancients called the church triumphant, and what the creed refers to as the communion of saints. And the invisible presence of the Lord we sometimes fail to see in our midst will be made plain for all of us to see. As the writer of 1 John puts it in the second lesson from this morning, we shall see him as he is. And whatever else that means, in the scripture, that means experiencing and knowing life to the fullest because we're in the presence of God. Those are the realities that All Saints Sunday called to mind. Well, that's a foot in one camp. But we struggle because we have a foot in another camp, in this world. And some of you are sitting here with tears of loss and sadness flowing down your face. The sting of death is still burning in your chest. Someone you love, a parent, a child, a spouse, a lover, a grandparent, a grandchild, a close friend, someone that you care about has died. And that pain is still extremely real. You feel alone and cut off, riding a roller coaster of emotions that has you laughing in memory one minute and sobbing the next. You don't want to praise God at this moment. More than likely, you want to shake your fist in God's face and scream out your pain and anger. And I hope you do. I hope you do. A lot of characters from the Bible did exactly that. And through that most honest of prayers and discussions with God, found their way back to joy, back to life, and back to God. And if you need examples of that, go read the book of Psalms. There's a whole group of Psalms in there that are called laments. Well, that's essentially what those people are doing. So touching on that, I could share with you several stories of loved ones whose death put me into a tailspin. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. I want to tell you one. His name was Jim Panos. A big, strapping, swarthy, dark, curly hair, black mustache, mischievous eyes and grin, a really good-looking guy with a commanding presence and a booming voice.
Thanos and I didn't always care for each other. I thought he was a showboat. <laughs> but we ended up working on a Via de Cristo weekend one time together, where we were one of three pastors working that weekend, and we had to live together for four days. And we became friends not because of me, but in spite of me. We became friends because Jim Panos pushed it. And he really pushed it to find out what was wrong between us and why we're at each other's throats. Our friendship was more his doing than mine. But once I got through that, I came to admire his grounding in grace, his perspective of faith, and his understanding of the church. Jim didn't grow up a believer. He didn't grow up in a home that anybody believed. And he came at faith from a very different perspective from mine. He was the first Lutheran pastor that I came to know who had a heart for those who were not yet in a relationship with the Lord. And he could connect with them very quickly and at a very deep level. Jim Panos is the reason that I first came to the Savannah area. Because in our friendship, he said to me, you're not involved enough. And so he dragged me into being involved in an event that was being held in Savannah. I don't know if I've ever forgiven him for that. He died on a Sunday afternoon at the age of 39 of a massive heart attack. I've never quite gotten over that loss. I've never found a reason that makes sense as to why that happened. And if truth be told, never quite forgiven God for taking them. And I really, really struggled with this. I searched for a long time to find some kind of way to bring at least a measure of peace to it. For me, oftentimes that means turning to the great hymns of the church. And I went through all the familiar ones and didn't find what I was looking for. And then in this With One Voice book, found one. It's an Advent hymn, and probably none of you ever heard it. <laughs> it's entitled, Each Winter as the Year Grows Older. And this is the first verse. Each winter as the year grows older, we each grow older too. The chill sets in a little colder, the verities we knew seem shaken and untrue. Whether we acknowledge it or not, every time we lose a loved one, there is the recognition somewhere deep inside that we're on that same journey. And that someday we're gonna have to face the reality of our own death. The wind blows colder each day as we move closer to that event. The chill sets in a little longer. The verities, we knew the things that we thought we understood and that we could build life and relationships on sometimes get shaken in these moments. And so they seem shaken and untrue. And then verse 3. Yet I believe beyond believing that life can spring from death, that growth can flower from our grieving, that we can catch our breath and turn transfixed by faith. Well, that's a faith statement to believe that in the midst of pain and loss and grief, that somehow God breaks through in a way that we can't even begin to imagine and causes something unbelievable to come to life inside of us and that we can catch our faith and be transfixed by faith. And then it ends this way. O oh, child of ecstasy and sorrows, O oh, prince of peace and pain, bright
bright in today, worlds by tomorrows. Renew our lives again, Lord Jesus, come and reign. Which really is the heart of the matter. Trusting that Jesus is Lord, who he says he is, and that the promise of this day is that someday we're going to be gathered together again. So in my mind's eye, <laughs> I can picture Panos watching all this right now, and I can see his lopsided grin and hear him saying, you big dope, get over it. Just remember someday you'll get here too, and even though that will damage property values in heaven, we'll get together and laugh again. And that is what I appreciate about All Saints Sunday. We can hold the feelings in our heart in one hand and balance them against the truth of the throne room image and the depth of joy in life that we'll one day know. We can temper our pain and our loss and our confusion with the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We can acknowledge our pain as valid and still look forward to the reunions to come. And it's the midst, in the midst of that holy tension that I'm going to ask us now to remember the loved ones who have died in the past year whose names we now call out. I'm sorry if I mangle some of these names. The Polish names have just <laughs> totally gotten me. <laughs> This one's fresh, Jeanette Altman. Bob Brown. Nadia Decker. Earl Newrath. Mike Soika. Jeff Beers. Brad Cummings, Mike Hall, Craig Parker, Mike Steffen, William Greg Flacker, Leon Zarnak, Ronnie Jones, Becky Sigmund, Ben Williams, Sandy Boyd, Robert Zuba, Linda Kaufman, Barry Sims. I invite you, if you have names that you would like to call out, to do so now, and then we'll have one final toll. Any other names? So I'd like to close this with a prayer done a little bit differently.
let's stand as we're able and sing together, shall we gather at the river. someone who doesn't like to preach or teach from Revelation, that song is right out of the book of Revelation. It says there, Revelation 22. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, when we look out 
in this world, there is so much hurt, so much pain, sometimes simply because of the death of someone that we don't know how we're gonna live without, and sometimes because of this awful thing called war that tears people apart physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Sometimes because of natural events, earthquakes, and floods, and famines. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the great healer. We ask that you would give us a measure of your power to go out and bring peace and healing to people in these situations, next door or around the world. Help us to value every part of your creation that you painstakingly made, that you gave such beauty to and such life to. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you those who've been struck down by all the many ailments that are going around. Some who are not here this morning because they're sick. That you would bring and speed healing. We pray for Judy recovering from shoulder shoulder surgery, for George recovering from back surgery. We lift up to you, Ann, who is scheduled for this heart procedure this week on Thursday, and pray that you would keep her healthy with no infection so that that can go forward. We pray for the Krill family and the approaching birth of their baby who may not live very long after birth. I, I don't even know what to ask except for your comfort and care. For Kenneth, who has had all kinds of problems in 18 years. For Matt, battling cancer again. We rejoice that Andy's doing better. We pray for Sonny. We pray and rejoice with the family that Gwen Nunn came into. For Tammy, for post-surgery and chemo and radiation. For Seth and Mary Beth as they continue this seemingly never-ending process with the Navy. For David undergoing even stronger chemo. And for Ashley Andrews in her high-risk pregnancy got lots of others in our heart. We lift up before you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We continue to pray with, on this day of remembering and celebrating and crying all at the same time, the family of Jeanette Altman, of Carolyn Boyd's family, passing of her daughter Sandy, the family of Roy Hallbreck and Darnell Callahan and Roland Moody and Trudy who's had such disasters come upon her life and the family of Greg Smithy. There are others that we have in our heart that we lift up to you for comfort that they may know you in a new way during this time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are in long-term health situations, who's, we don't even know how this is gonna work out. That she would bless them, that she would give them a sense of your presence. They're not going through this alone. That you were walking through this time with them. For Lisa, for Jason, for mom and dad, for Sharon, for Stephen, for George and Carolyn, and Rick, for Paul and Brenda, and Mary and Daniel, Audrey, and Sarah, Dorothy, Virginia, Aramay, and Isabel. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, wherever people are trying to advance your kingdom through kind word or action, through a word of hope, and sometimes even in proclaiming your good news, that you would bless all of those avenues and bring people to know you and your great love for all of us. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The old joke is that everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to go today. But we're going to sing when we all get to heaven.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right to salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the blessedness of your saints, you have given us a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling, that moved by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, O Lord Jesus took the bread of suffering, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup of salvation, gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As Christ has taught us, we boldly pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Body and blood of the Lord for the people of the Lord. We invite all who confess Christ as Lord to join with us in this meal of celebration. You may be seated. Of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. May the Lord bless you and fill you as you keep trying to in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. We can eat the body of Christ given for you. May the Lord fill you with the strength and his power as all his love. In Jesus' name. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you to life everlasting. Amen. the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The words of this benediction were modified by a friend of mine who was one of those who's in the church triumphant now, and that's the reason I get choked up from time to time, because when I use these words, I think of Frank. So go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you both this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We're going to close with this final hymn when the saints go marching in. I want to tell you a story about this. When I first came to St. Nicodemus in Marilla, New York, we were doing Wednesday evening services out at the picnic shelter. And that Wednesday before, I had given a little message on the importance of, of praise and singing and what that means in the scriptures and what it means for us in our faith. And I said, it says make a joyful noise. It doesn't say you have to sing well. I don't care if you use kazoos, just make a joyful noise. So the following Sunday, which was the Sunday I was officially installed, we get to this song, which was the closing song then too, and about 30 people in the congregation broke out kazoos. <laughs> when the saints go marching in. Father in heaven, we thank you for this food, for those who prepared it, for the celebration of an anniversary of your work here in this place with this people, that you would continue to use us in the days and weeks ahead, and that this food would strengthen us for that mission. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So grow in faith, love God, serve others, share Christ, impact the world.